Oh, friend, it's so nice to feel you hold me again. And it doesn't matter where you have been. My heart welcomes you back home. Oh, friend, this is where our happy ending begins. And I know this time that we're going to win. My heart welcomes you back home again. Welcome, 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 guys. Yes. I know I'm early, but there's a reason I'm early. Yes. And there's a reason I sung that, just a little tidbit of that Phyllis Hyman song. It's, it's just so fitting for what we're going to talk about today. Hey, Aunt Mary, Vernon, Paris, Leo, how you guys doing? Yes, I know I'm early, but I want to have some space to take care of. A little bit of business, get the business out of the way. All right. First of all, I ask that you guys subscribe, like, and share my new YouTube channel. And obviously it's called the Less D Experience. Now the difference between the YouTube channel and Facebook, first of all, you can't say and do things on Facebook that you can do on YouTube. So it's gonna, gonna be a kind of, a little more grown up, yeah. As if we weren't grown up enough over here, right? Um, but I am looking to get at least 1,000 subscribers by December 25th. I feel like giving some gifts away, yeah. I'll let you know what that's about later. And once I get enough subscribers, I'm going to start having my celebrity friends come on and interview them and things like that and let you guys ask them questions. Also, I'll be on location. Um, me getting my life back <laughs> since I've been on medical hiatus for like over three, four years. Uh, so you'll see me in the studio um, doing scratch vocals, doing writing songs to tracks for different studios. You'll see me in the theater at rehearsals for different plays. You'll see me all around. And we're also going to be visiting people um, on their jobs and in their careers and see what they do for real, <laughs> see how stuff works. So YouTube is going to be really, really hoity-toity and fun, okay? So make sure you go over. It's called the Less D Experience. I put the link up in the subscription over there, way at the bottom. So you guys can click it. So you don't have to be looking for it, really. Just click the link. It'll take you over there. So subscribe, like, and then share. Okay. And really, really quickly, I'm talking and yakking and all that stuff um, to give you time to think about what we're going to talk about today. I um, And also, correct me, if I uh, say the wrong terms as far as, uh, like, I don't want to say con, but like ex-convicts or ex-felons or I don't want to ever for any reason offend anybody in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So if I'm using the wrong terminology, please, please right away say, Les, you don't say that or that's not politically correct because I don't know, okay? That's done. Uh, so what we're going to do, I want you guys to keep your thinking caps on and to put suggestions in the comment section. If you know anything, any jobs that are hiring people with felonies or misdemeanors who have had any jail time or any trouble with the law, who have paid their dues on, and done their time. If you know jobs, if you are a business owner, please think about, you know, giving someone an opportunity who was, uh, spent some time, you know, in the, in, in jail or prison or what have you. Okay. Uh, I wish I had my business up and going and flowing, you know, cause I sure will hire a lot of people. So you are, if you are a business owner in any way, shape, form or fashion, or have a relative that's a business owner, please talk to them about allowing people with, uh, a, a record, a criminal record, uh, to work for them, okay? So we're gonna get started, all right? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Less D experience where we all get in therapy together. <laughs> I'm not here trying to be an expert on anything. I am just creating a platform so that we all can express our experiences, yes, our opinions, and get therapy together, work it all out, loving on each other, educating each other. All right. 
So we're going to get started. Oh, let me speak to everybody. Hey, Will and Terry and Robert. I asked my sister Terry to join me and she said no. Yeah. <laughs> hey, James and Otis and Dominique. How you guys doing? All right. So what we're going to do is if you look closely, hey, James, if you guys uh, really look closely in, in the uh, description box or whatever that thing is called, <laughs> uh, you will see three links, website links. And those are links for um, felon friendly jobs in the state of Virginia. Now, I, I really want to say that first because if you are in another state other than Virginia, please put in what state you're in and put at least one, at least one website link that will hire um, uh, ex-felons or anybody who's been in jail for any reason, any marks on their record or whatever else. I want you to put what state you're in and give uh, a website or a number or anything or a 1-800 number or anybody. Uh... Yes, Otis. I, <laughs> how you know I have a cold, Otis? Really? Yeah, guys, I have a really bad cold. You know, I got my tissue red. Hopefully, I won't have to blow on camera. Only Otis would know I'm sniffing, really. But uh, uh, so I, I want you guys to put what state you're in. For instance, I think James um, is in New York. James would put, you know, New York, and he would put a website that uh, ex felons or people with a, a, a jail record can contact and look for jobs also housing i you know I, I i i've talked to several people they did not want to come on here and that's understandable they didn't want to come uh, sit with me live and talk about it but i interviewed and talked to several people about first of all their jail experience and we're going to get to that uh soon and also the time the hard time they're having in getting not just a job but a decent place to stay uh so that they can separate themselves from the old circumstances situations that landed them there in the first place uh, we're going to talk about housing as well so this is going to be a very informative uh and needful so needful uh i did not have hey of uh, gary and uh lenora i did not get a chance to put the graph I might put the graph in the comments later uh, of the ratio of African-American men that's incarcerated compared to Latina and then white men. And so we cannot, us, cannot sit back and wait for our justice system, our state, to do right by them or to properly transition them for real, not just to say they are, but for real. Give them the mental and emotional support that they need, as well as financial support that they need. You see what I'm saying? You know, and I'm going to talk to the women on here too. I don't care if you are a wife of someone who's been in jail, a girlfriend, a mom, sister, a auntie, or a nana. Please excuse my stuffed nose. Uh, hey, Judge. Hey, Elwood. Uh, uh, so we're going to be discussing a lot. That's why I came in a little bit early so we can get everybody's uh, opinions in, everybody's experiences in, and we can get this information out. Now, what I want to say is our African-American men is the most incarcerated. Some because of, yes, some things that they've done, but a lot of them are trumped up charges, charges that they have not been proven guilty of, Charges that had nothing to do with them. Stuff that even if they did something is way past the years they're supposed to be in there. And I really feel, and this is just my opinion, you know, I don't care if y'all cuss me out. I'm used to people cussing me out. <laughs> but in my opinion, since they have legalized marijuana, dope, weed, Mary J, what they, I don't know what they call it now, uh, in so many states, I really feel that everybody, they arrested for having a dime bag or 20 our peace or whatever y'all call it you know they should let them out are you serious now you guys are selling it in vending machines in food i mean california and colorado the people there is telling me the stuff they do they get it delivered to their house all packaged all pretty i really think they should let those men go but that's just my opinion however when they get out who's going to be there to really transition them 
You know what I'm saying? The, the, the conversations I've had with some people before I did this show, because I think you come over here, you don't know nothing. They're treated like animals, dogs, less than human beings. You know what I'm saying? And then they do, they do their time. They throw them out there. Some don't even get any proper transitioning. You know what I'm saying? They harass some of them. I'm sorry for my cold. Uh, you know, and so they need a support system. Families, women, you know, they need a support system. They don't need you asking them all kinds of crazy stuff of what happened in jail or whatever else. Come on now. Come on. You know, the stuff I've heard men tell me that has been said to them by loved ones, you know, asking them some crazy questions. I'm not going to get into those questions because that's irrelevant, you know, but just being disrespectful, you know. I, you know, we need to be more loving and more kind. And that's why I sung the song at the beginning. Um, no matter how long they've been in there, no matter what's going on, our heart needs to welcome them back home again. You know, they, they, they have, you know, if you guys can remember, you know, when the Vietnam uh, soldiers came back to the United States, they were treated like garbage. They were treated like trash, living homeless in the street, all kinds of stuff, you know. And that's, about, that's the same thing that our, you know, people, loved ones or men, and some women, too, who have served time come out to craziness, madness, shenanigans, foolishness. You know, you don't need to be, you know, disrespectful to the, the yes, and you have to be patient. They have been treated less than human beings, you know, so it's going to take a while. It takes a while for military men to transition, men and women, to transition back to civilian population. So can you imagine what it's like for you to have served five years, three years, 10 years, 15 years in, in, in state pen or in jail, you know, and you come out, that's a, that's a big transition, guys. That's a big change, you know? So they come in to a crappy halfway house or not even that, you know, it, it's just ridiculous. So I think it's our duty. I can't say what the churches are doing and things like that. Hey, but having a, a jail ministry inside, okay, that's good and dandy, all right? But what are we doing when they come out? What are we doing? Are we taking them to get a haircut? And speaking of haircuts, if any of you guys are barbers, put that in the comment section. If somebody is just getting out in the last month or two or a couple of weeks or whatever else, you know, can you give them a free haircut? You know, I'm just saying, y'all, we as a community need to come together and help out our men, our kings, just because they've been incarcerated, just because things have happened to them, and just because they've had this issue or, 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 or this thing. It doesn't make them less than kings and royalty. That's who we are. And it is our job. It is our job as a community to reach out and help them transition properly you know um okay let me get back over here somebody's just saying something these things are going up so fast hold on hey ty hey levi how you guys doing okay otis is uh he's uh chiming in from las vegas he said it's legal here in vegas and i agree they should let african-americans out who were incarcerated for that yes he said in las vegas uh dope is legal uh oh y'all got vending machines out there like california because my son uh elijah told me Dwayne, said that they got vending machines they uh, a couple of his uh classmates because he's getting his masters have it delivered to the door like pizza <laughs> i'm like what He's like, yeah, and the paraphernalia comes with it. You order what you like. They got an app for it. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? But yet they got thousands and thousands of guys locked up for a dime bag or whatever. I don't even know how it all breaks up. But for not even enough that they can even say that they have the intent to sell. It was like personal weed they're knocking, locked up for. I really think they should let them out. Hey, Elwood, how you doing? And that's just my opinion. I stand by it. Hey, Janice. So what we're on here to doing um, is if you guys, please, 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 why I'm yapping and bumping my guns and trying not to sneeze all across the place. Uh, 
if you know anybody. Now, I didn't put three links for the Hampton Roads area and Virginia, but uh, wow. Uh, Otis is also saying there in Las Vegas, they have dispensaries that sell marijuana by the plant along with edibles. <laughs> wow. And I'm not trying to put nobody on blast, but Shawnee O'Neill and her son is going into business, in the marijuana business, and they're opening a company, they're gonna make billions. And we got our men up in jail. Come on, come on. I mean, I don't know, is it just me? I don't, I don't, I don't even see how that's right. I don't see how that's right, but we're not gonna dwell on that alone. But what I'm saying is when they get out, it is our responsibility. I, I really feel it's our responsibility to rebuild our community. They snatched so many fathers out of the homes of these children, our children. You see what I'm saying? You know, so it is our uh, job to help them transition, not talk down about them to their children, not tell them your daddy in jail, blah, blah, blah. Now I understand some people don't want to take the child to, a, to the prison to visit them because they don't want them in the atmosphere or see that type of thing. You know, I get it. To each his own. But you can at least let the child regularly write a letter. Let that person know that you are not an animal. You are not less than a human. That your child still loves you. You know, and even if you don't want to be together or y'all break up as a couple or whatever, still be friends and respect them and help them transition, whether it be housing, whether it be food, or help them find a job, or help them find a resume, a build a resume, or take them to get a haircut or whatever else. You love them at one time. You love them enough to lay down with them to get a child. So you can at least, here it goes. I'm so sorry, guys. Please forgive me. You can at least help them transition, even if you're not going to be a couple, you know, with them. You know, Ty is saying something. Okay. Ty is saying, I think the weed in Cali is for medicinal use only, supposedly. Nope. No, it's not Ty. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, it used to be when they first started the foolishness, but now they have vending machines. And Elijah has roommates that gets it delivered. Now, I don't know from a company, but I don't see, I don't know what's legit. He didn't go into the details, but uh, they have vending machines. Hey, Christy. Hey, Devin. So uh, y'all can uh, like search that out. I'm not up here trying to, you know, give out facts or anything like that. I'm just going on with people who told me who live in these states. Uh, so uh, I, I, I just, I, whatever. So, um, uh, I'm still looking, no one has really, or you guys don't know, any place that's uh, uh, felon friendly. Like I said, I put three links up there. You know, and what's a shame is some of these guys have really committed themselves to education while they're in there. So they're coming out with associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, PhDs, masters. But because of where they got it, you know, or, or where they were, they're not being hired. I think that's a travesty. And uh, I'm sorry to put my leg up, still healing. Um, so, uh, oh gosh, this is a disaster. I didn't want to cancel the show. So please disregard all sniffles and whatever. So I, I really think this is important. And my question is, why don't we? Why don't we help our men? Can anybody tell me? I, I don't understand it. There used to be a time... Back in, I think, 2006 or 2007, uh, I have to ask my kids, I can't remember, when I used to, I think it was 2006, um, I partnered with this woman. She had a halfway house. Uh, I, I didn't like the way things were set up. That's all I'm going to say. So I did a little extra. I took time out of my schedule throughout the day because I was making my own schedule at that time. And I would drive these guys to interviews, uh, to the to the Goodwill, so they could find suits and things like that. Now I cut hair, so I, I didn't have to like beg a barber. I cut their hair myself. Um, if they wanted their braids or whatever, I would braid it, you know. So it would be kind of someone wouldn't let the braids go. Cause like I said, they do come out strong-willed, <laughs> set in their ways, angry, upset. 
you know? So I try to do the best I could, but I was one person and I used to go like, you know, I'm not, I'm not being funny. Where are the churches? Where are the community centers? Where are our people to help our men? You know, and I keep saying men and dwell on men because it is easier for a woman who's been in prison or jail to transition or to get help for some reason. I don't know what's, what legally is supposed to happen, but in real life, it is easier for a woman to get help and transition when she's coming out. Um, okay, Otis is saying the system is not, in all caps, designed to, for the, to uplift African-Americans. So we have to look out for us. I will look for organizations and websites that are here in Vegas and elsewhere that are designed to help us. Hey, Lucido. Um, and also, uh, they're not designed to help Latinas either. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you, Otis. Otis, when you find that information, please put it over there in the comment section. Uh, and you, too, got, you guys too, if you know anything, uh, put in the comment section, housing, uh, jobs, food, uh, bread lines who don't mind catering to them, things like that who won't look at them like they stink or they crazy. I just don't understand it. Never look down on a man unless you're picking them up. You know, because, you know, you know, y'all, let's just be real about it. Can we just be real and not all politically correct for a few minutes? Because that's it. You don't like it, get off the channel. But I like to keep it real and raw. Some of us <laughs> has done exactly the same thing a lot of them has done, but just has never gotten caught. Let's just keep it real. Uh, let me just be African-American. <laughs> Some of us have robbed, stole, even <laughs> I know for a fact, some people have molested and raped and they've done everything that somebody's in prison for. Some of you guys or women or people have done the same thing and just never got caught or stopped doing it in time or was slicker, <laughs> you know, but, uh, so that's why you should never, ever look down on a man unless you're picking him up. It could be you at any time. Like the situation I was talking about, when that, you know, when the white guy, you know, chased me down with his truck and tried to hurt me last week, you know, if I did have a gun, I was so wound up and, and petrified, afraid for my, my life and well-being that if I did have a gun or a pistol or whatever else, I would have shot him because he made it a point that he was going to hurt me. Now, the way our justice system, system is, I could easily end up in jail or in prison. Because I don't think I would be the one that they would have believed. You see what I'm saying? And I, you know, and people was like coming down on me, even in my private messages. You know, why didn't you just go find a cop? Why didn't you tell the cop or whatever else? I mean, we're afraid to approach the police. We're afraid to get any help and things like that. You know, because so, you just don't know how it's going to turn what mood that office is going to be in, whether like you get caught up. So I did the best thing I could do, you know? So I think it's up to us to save us, you know, and we need to work on when our kings are let go out of that horror, that, that H hole that they've been locked in for whatever, how many years we need to be there emotionally, mentally, financially, and physically for them. They ain't got no car when they come out there. Come on. You have a car. Can you, you know, don't be like sucking. Most of us what, uh, Terry? I see Terry saying most of us. What do you mean? You know, a lot of us have been jilted. People that's in there have been jilted by the justice system, lied on, crooked judges, all kinds of stuff. Some people don't even belong in there at all. You know, and I think it's very unfair when they come out to still be treated like a criminal or a convict or whatever. Look, these people have paid their dues. They've done their time. And I think we should be here, you know, with open arms and open hearts to help them transition, to let them know you are still a human being. Just not say it with our mouth, but show them we still respect you. We still love you. 
We are still here for you. Anything I can do to help you, I will. Yes, it's exasperating. Yes, it gets tedious. Yes, you get physically tired. But if that was you, you would want somebody to go beyond and above for you. Hey, Valerie, how you doing? You know, and I just think it's a travesty. You know, we've seen that when they come out, they're not really getting the help and the proper transition and the proper rehabilitation that they need. So I think we need to um, dig our heels in the ground and start helping our men. I mean, where else are they going to go? And everybody's talking about, oh, it's a revolving door. Once you've been in there, they'll do something to go back in there. Well, let me ask you something. Let's say you've been in prison four years, five years, shoot, three years, two, a year. But you've been in there. They release you with no money, a PO with an attitude, a parole officer <laughs> with an attitude, you know, the woman you had when you went in is gone with somebody else. The house you may have had is gone. The car, every, all you belong is, is gone. So they release you with nothing. You're hungry. You have to eat. You have to drink. You need somewhere to bathe. You need somewhere to lay your head. And you have no money. You look into your people who looking at you like you stink, don't have one to give you a covered dish, don't have one to help you, talking about you, all kinds of stuff. These are your relatives, your woman, or if you're a woman, your man ain't there no more. You have nothing. It's revolving door because they don't, they revert back to what they know so they can eat. The basic needs of a human being is what they still need, like you and I still need. So, of course, they're going to go back to robbing, selling dope, or whatever else if they can't get no money, if they can't get no job, if they can't get a plate from you, if they can't get a plate from their mama. They come to a family union, watch Pookie, you know, he just got out of jail. Are you serious right now? Girl, grab your purse. Hey, Peaches, how you doing? Come on, y'all. Get, get out of here with that. That's wrong. That's wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, Terry said, most of us have done wrong and didn't get caught. Amen to that. Hey, Tariq. Hey, David. How you doing? So, you know, I, I, I don't mean to be emotional <laughs> up here. Every last one of us, every last one of us, I know if you're Black or Latina, every last one of them know at least one, and that's at least one person that's in jail or has been in jail. And I know at least we all got one person, one loved one who we love, you know, in our families. Come on. You know, I, I, I just think it's wrong. I just think it's wrong. It could be me tomorrow. It, it, it could be you tomorrow. Somebody touch my child. I, it could be me. I'll just start an acting class right in jail. You touch my child. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I just, you know, everybody have their triggers. Everybody has their triggers. So uh, we, we just got by. We just got by. And I, I, I just think it's a shame. I'm not going to stay on here really, really long because I'm just, I, I really get upset about this. I've seen people treat people so bad so bad who just got out of jail, who, and the, who tried to do right. They, people really get, don't nobody get out of jail and say, whoo, thank you for letting me out, officer. I'm going to come back tomorrow because I miss y'all so much. No one says that crap. No one feels that way. But they get out here, and we as a community and a society turn our backs on them. You know, every time you turn around, every time they do good, every time I had somebody call me the other day, contact me the other day and go, I, um, I'm looking for a job. Do you know anybody that will hire me? Me with my naive self, this happened like last week. I sent them a couple of suggestions. And they told me that a place told them, yo, uh, first of all, you can't be caught lying. If you're caught lying, they say you have a criminal background. As soon as they find out, they fire you, humiliate you in front of everybody. So you tell the truth. And this guy told me that Walmart distribution, I put them out there, I put the guy out there, but I put them out there, told him to come back in two years. Now, do you know, I talked, do you know 
how much it took for this man. I mean, he's a man's man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's what's running around here lately, but a man's man. Yeah, Terry said, well, you read what Terry said. <laughs> read it in the comments, child. Uh, but it took a lot for him to, first of all, come to me. No, first of all, make the decision that he's going to go and beg, I can tell you what he's, you know, for this job. You know, alter his looks, get interview ready, this and that. You know, humble himself did everything, you know, walked through the rigmarole of applying for the job, for them to get him in there and say, uh, nah, come back in two years and maybe we'll think about it. <sighs> Can you imagine if you all really going through some emotional stuff and some mental stuff? You know, this person got their children back and they're trying to be on the up and up and not be in the street and do things right and then you take the steps the society tells you you're supposed to take and they spit in your face. They look at you like you trash. They treat you like garbage, like you're not a human. And you're probably smarter than the one who's interviewing you. Come on. Can you imagine? That, was, that would make somebody go out, get a drink, smoke a joint, do whatever they used to do to ease the pain of frustration humiliation, being fed up, and just feeling hopeless. So we can't depend on anybody else to save our kings. We can't. And I can't wait till I am blessed with enough money that I can build a facility because I still am looking and believing that I'm going to have my own theater. You know what I'm saying? So I can hire, make everybody else feel bad, hire fellas only. <laughs> no, that'd be wrong. Discrimination, I know. But I'm just saying, I can't wait till I get resources so I can help like I desire to help. You know, I have a desire for that. And single women and, and teen moms, you know, just, man, people give people the, give the wrong people the money. You see what I'm saying? You know, so uh, I just, I just, I just solicit you guys to put yourself in their shoes. You ain't gotta tell nobody what you do. You'll be, you know, what you do a secret, you will be rewarded openly. You know, so, you know, look, look out for hours. You know, even if you, something simple is, if you sit there, just have to be sitting beside somebody at a cookout or wherever you be or at DMV, anywhere, and, and that comes up or you find out there, just say, hey, how you doing? Just for them to have a, a decent conversation with somebody, and they're not treating them like they're some kind of alien or trash. Do you know how much that means to somebody? Because you've been dehumanized and beaten, all kinds of other stuff done to you for how, how many ever years. You just want somebody to treat you like a human being. You just want somebody to have a conversation with you. You just want to be heard. It could be my child. It could be my son or my daughter tomorrow. It could be yours tomorrow. It could be me or it could be you. You know what I'm saying? Valerie is saying, my sister desires to do the same thing. Her plans in motion soon. You are definitely right, Les. Thank you, uh, Valerie. But uh, I, I just... You know, the, the, I remember, like, let's just get a grant. Just get this and this and that. Do you know how long I'll be trying to get grants for this or that? And then Duper New say they're not zoned for this. Or I said, well, I'll do it in Hampton. Hampton, I'm not zoned for that. It's just obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. You see, we sit here with all these celebrities that look like us and all these rich people that look like us. Who's not even doing the simplest thing? It's sad. You know, I don't idolize and look up to nobody. If you're good at what you do, I said, wow, I congratulate you. You're good at what you do. But I don't idolize you. I'm not part of the, the Barney something and the beehive and all that stuff. No. I don't put my faith in man for no reason. They put their underwear on the same way I do if they weigh them. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the show me state, man. Show me. Don't, you know, do something with your money. Besides, you know, buy sequence onesies. I mean, come on. I mean, do something with your money instead of 
buying Lamborghinis or a 15 bedroom house. It's just three of y'all or two of y'all. That kind of ridiculousness, man, get out of here. You know, people don't want me to start talking because, you know, my production team sits me down every time before I do this show and tell me to stay away from certain topics because they're my triggers. Yeah. So to be the politically correct me, but I have strong feelings about a lot of things and I ain't afraid to say them. I'm just trying to play well in the say it box right now. So that's why I'm going over to YouTube so I can express myself a little more. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Hey, Rona. You know, but I mean, I want you guys just to, you know, just come on now. Look out for our kings. Come on. If you have a resource, if you're a barber, cut somebody's hair who just got out of jail. If you own a boutique or a store, man, just, you know, loan them a suit for an interview or loan them a pair of shoes or jeans or whatever else. You can write it off on your taxes. That's another thing. You can write it off on your taxes and people still won't help nobody out. I... Okay, I I'm going to get off here. But uh, we need to help our own. Uh, Stop depending on the judicial system, the government, our state. Our just we need to help our own people. They are still kings. Kings is just had a hard time and went down the wrong path. But after they're paid their dues and done their time, they should be able to come home to somebody loving them and somebody caring about them. You know, it, it's 4:28. I got to go. Please, please. Whatever state that you are in, I'm in Virginia right now. Now, I didn't put three links up in the description box of websites where they are felon friendly. They hire felons. Uh, I couldn't find any houses that would help them with housing. Uh, but if you know that for your state, do it for your state. Uh, for instance, I don't, I don't know if you're in Nebraska. You'll put Nebraska, here's some um, links to uh, fellow friendly jobs here in Nebraska. Here's some housing help. Here's some food help. Here are a couple of barbers that will cut fellas' hair for free one time if they can do it one. Because I know they people got bills to pay. I get it. You know, uh, over here, they'll give fellas some clothes, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, things like that. Over here is a support group for these guys, because they're going through some mental and some emotional transitions and traumas that they need to deal with. Can't nobody, I mean, I joke all the time that we up here get therapy, you know, but uh, we can't really afford the real therapists, psychologists and psychiatrists, you know, so if you guys can start, if you are a counselor, that's another thing. If you guys, if any one of you are a counselor, hey, once a week or the Sunday or a weekend, you know, start a little group for ex cons so they can express themselves. You think that they'll deal with PTSD just like our military men. We don't know the horrors, the stuff that they go through in that place, especially when they send them there at 18 years old. <sighs> okay, I'm done. Again, uh, this wasn't uh, one of those fun shows we usually have. It was just very, very, very needed. Uh, Again, I, I ask you guys to uh, just put the stuff in the comment section and um, help somebody, talk to somebody, you know, give us some ideas so I can, you know, help somebody in my state. You can help somebody in your state and things like that. Also, don't forget to go over to my YouTube channel, The Lesty Experience, and subscribe, like, and share. You know, because once I get, uh, I, think, I don't know if Levi is still on here, but Levi is going to be interviewed on the YouTube channel. Once I get enough subscribers on there, a lot of traffic over there, because I want whatever he has to say, you know, to be uh, heard. And he can get his marketing out there, whatever he's doing. I think Black Street is coming back. Levi can correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're coming back and getting back together. I'm not sure. Uh, hey, Jackie, how you doing? You know, so... Uh, a lot of things have been going over there. Me going back into the studio, getting back into theater rehearsals, all that fun stuff is going to happen over there on YouTube, not on Facebook. All right. Uh, love you guys much, but I got to go and properly blow my nose. <laughs> but um, I thank you guys for chiming in. You have been phenomenal. 
phenomenal, phenomenal. It's my nose. You have been fantastic and great. And I thank you for all, all of your support. And again, we just all are here sharing our experiences and our opinions. Yes, we all need therapy. So just go over to the comment section, put that information down if you know anybody can help a, a felon in any way, okay? All right, and don't look down on the man unless you're picking him up. So keep the conversation going over to the comments. All right, let's talk. All right, now, I'm out of here. <laughs>